Hello, Aquarist. Today we will discuss with you our fish disease case number 45. Here we will discuss a parasitic and a bacterial infection, a combined infection on a glossolapis incisus, which is the, the red rainbow. And this red rainbow is one of the most popular ones, but lately we see quite some problems appear on this fish. And it starts to show with uh, a, fishes, a few fish in the group that become skinny, they're losing their normal color. So some are getting very dark, they're slowly wasting away and they die. Again, it's one of those cases which you don't see any particular, very easy to see parasite or wounds. It's it just uh, the wasting away of a fish. And if we examine that fish, you know, that skinny fish, you take a, a tissues from the scales, some skin scrapings, and you take some gill tissue. That's the most important part you usually examine of those fish. And already on the gills, which I show here in a microscopic observation, you see that the gills are patched, some red patches and some clear transparent patches in the gills. So it should be homogeneous, uh, orange red color. This is not normal uh, colored gills. That is our microscopic pathological view. And if we look in the microscope, we see the bloody uh, patches on the gills and, and the necrotic parts in the gills. So this gill is in a very bad condition and not capable of doing any, uh, how can I say, any good uh, respiratory activities. So the bleeding is abnormal and the necrotic patches are abnormal. And at the other side, we also see there were a few uh, flukes, some few gill flukes also on the gill. So this might be a potential risk of damage and in infiltration of a bacterial infection. And you see that also here in this part of the gill, you see that fluke here attached with his hooks to the, the gill tissue. And that is causing lesions and causing a risk of uh, bacterial infections. And that might, makes the gills very susceptible to serious bacterial infections and where eventually the fish will die from. Here, this is another part of another gill arch which we took out from that fish. And you see the whole necrotic patch here. That those gill lamellae are all uh, wasted away or devoured by bacteria. So this is already an advanced case. And you can imagine that that fish becomes skinny because he has not the normal respiration behavior. He will be less hungry, uh, less appetite, eating less and slowly waste away. Also, when we check internally the organs, and I show you here uh, on the left, the spleen, and on the, red, on the right here, the liver. And you can see that tissue is not normally formed. The spleen has very dark uh, patches, which is called Milano macrophag centers, and also the liver here has some red bleeding patches, and that's most likely due to the bacterial infection, which was already uh, easy to see on the gills. So this fish has also internal bacterial infections. And if we looked further in the organs, we found a few tubercles next to the intestine and the organs. Also in that uh, is a possible case that it might have been a, a case of fish tuberculosis. Only a laboratory can confirm this when you do a, a, a good uh, molecular testing in a laboratory. If we looked further in the organs, we saw a bunch of bacteria. Uh, we saw rot shaped bacteria, we saw pointed bacteria, so it's quite a mix of problems. We found that this one particular fish, which is uh, bacteria, which are parasites, and, and, and fish which are very weak. We can recommend in a case like this, when the fish is so weak and so badly damaged, that we put a fish asleep. The euthanize the most weakest fish, because they can spread the disease to the other healthy fish, and it's better to separate them. You can try to treat in a separate tank, but if it fish is so badly wasted away, it's better to euthanize the fish. Uh, I can recommend to in the prevention plan of this kind of incidents that you have to check your uh, frozen or live food. 
because some of those uh, frozen or live food contain a high microbial load and that can have an impact on your fish health. Also check the water quality. Apply antibacterial medications. We would recommend here in this case to use oxytetracycline or, or other one. After one week, apply an anti gel fluke treatment because here in this case, we recommend first to treat the bacterial infection because that's the most severe infection and the few gill flukes, well, that might be coming more severe in the coming days, you apply a treatment of against those flukes one week later. And as food, we recommend to use our Dr. Basslier Biofish Food FUCO to help control the bacterial infection and for the repair of the fish. Apply grapefruit uh, seed extract uh, in our biofish food or the professional treat, which is also uh, very helpful in the repair uh, and, uh, of the fish and to develop a better immune system. After 20 days, try to feed with our Dr. Pasleer Bajer food garlic, which is very good in the control of parasitic infections like gill fluke. So a combination of food and medication is, uh, can be a good help uh, for, your, uh, for your fish care, because this case was a, a mixed infection, maybe an infection going on for many weeks or months, maybe already coming from the breeder and controlling a bacterial and parasitic infection, you have to look at, observe the lesions, observe the lesions. When there is a heavy uh, necrotic tissues, in, like we saw here in the gills, first control those bacterial infections because they will kill your fish eventually. And that's the first you have to attack or to handle with a proper uh, antibacterial treatment. Okay, I hope this video helped you to solve this kind of problem. Stay tuned. Thank you.